What's up, everyone? I'm James Bainey, and I'm here with Kyle Larson, and we are getting ready to tell you what happened in Thrawn Ascendancy Greater Good. Stick around. All right, Kyle, uh, we're back again. We're doing the second book now. So if uh, if you haven't checked it out, um, if you're getting ready to uh, read or, or watch this video, but you haven't gone back and looked at what happened in Chaos Rising, you're going to want to go check that out, get a, get a vibe for what happened in that book, and then you can come right over to this one um, and see where we pick up as we're moving into the second book. Um, and if you don't know, what we're going to do in this video specifically is we're going to tell you the plot specifically full of spoilers so this is for people who who either haven't read the book or, i'm sorry or who are um are not planning on reading the book or maybe did read the book a while ago and they just want a refresher but this is full on the story of what happens in the book spoilers and everything so you, you're being warned um and then we're just going to try to bl blow through it in like you know 10 or 15 minutes or something like that and so you understand what happens in the plot um are you ready to get started kyle i am ready and we will spoil you, so beware. Yes, <laughs> and big thanks to Kyle for putting together um, this whole like timeline event uh, so we can explain it easily. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for your help as well. All right, guys, um, so now we're getting ready to get started. Thrawn Ascendancy, greater good, here we go. This is what happened. Um, the story is basically a long game, keeping the reader in the dark through most of it, but essentially it's about an alien race trying to start a civil war with the Chiss as part of their divide and conquer strategy to take over the chaos, which is, you know, the galaxy in their area. Um, uh, a turbulent part, oh, the, a turbulent part of the unknown regions. This, uh, summary as we move forward, make it a bit confusing, but trust us it's it, yeah we're, we'll get through it <laughs> thrawn and aralani right uh are cleaning up what's left of the nick ardune from the last book we meet a new senior captain named lakinda of the zodlak family formerly one of the ruling families there's nine of them formerly one of those uh who's been working closely with uh with them now we learn that thurfian uh set his sights on becoming speaker of the chiss hoping to finally expel Thrawn from the myth family, right? Uh, Jixtus, who was the revealed as the big villain in the last one, um, the, uh, he is uh, meeting with Hapleaf, and Hapleaf is a new character for this book. He's his best agent. He travels the worlds to engineer civil conflicts to bring down societies. They're observing a world recently taken down um, while they discuss their strategy to take down the Chiss specifically. And we learn that a refugee ship has fled the most recent world and is beginning to be pursued by the Nick Ardune. Right? Right. So, what's so from there on, uh, Thrawn makes contact with uh, this refugee ship that escaped. Um, and we learn it's belonged to a species called the, the Magus. Um, is that right, James? You have to help me. With okay. Yes, mages. the mages, and they're a force-sensitive species. They don't call it this force. Um, so they believe their planet, yeah. which Thrawn nicknames Sunrise, um, has been massacred, and they're basically ready to die by suicide. And it's their way of trying to become one with the force, which they actually call the Beyond. Um, this really alarms Thrawn and Thalia, um, and they want to try to find a way to convince uh, the Magus uh, matriarch. Uh, to stay alive so that they can prove there's still hope. So the, the mages are essentially led by a, a matriarchal, they're a matriarchal society and, um, you know, they have to, uh, you know, kind of follow what they're doing. So, so it all depends on this one person. So meanwhile, we mm -hmm. learn that Hapleaf uh, has made contact with a young Chiss couple, uh, Yapanik and Yomi, who are on basically the equivalent of what Australian youth do, which is a walkabout where they go and kind of explore the world, except the Chiss are doing it around, you know, they're part of the unknown regions and the chaos. Hapleaf is able to manipulate them into joining the, uh, the Ab, um, Agbui vessel as they travel around the chaos. Um, they're kind of hoping to exploit the knowledge that these two might have and use that to put Jixus, Jixus's mysterious plan into motion. Um, so Hapleaf mm -hmm. is able to steer the young travels to a rural Chiss planet called uh, Selwis, 
um, and a Zoldak family stronghold, uh, which is it's a sparsely populated planet and it's primarily focused on agriculture. There's a lot of ranchers and farmers. Um, Hapleaf, he learns of an ambitious Zoldak counselor named Lakuviv. Lakuviv. Lakuviv, yes. I'm overpronouncing again. And uh, there's <laughs> lots of That's that it. in this book. <laughs> um, and Hapleaf believes, he sees that uh, Lakuviv is very ambitious and he thinks that they can manipulate them into uh, pushing Justice's plan forward. Yeah. Meanwhile, right on the other end, Thrawn goes rogue to find out who harmed the Magus's planet after engaging in an unknown uh, alien dreadnought he suspects is a ploy to distract from the motives, motive behind the attack of the Magus's homeworld. Uh, heading to investigate a conflict between a neighboring species, the Patatus, right? Uh, and pirates, there's a thing going on there. He discovers a ruse by the remaining Nick Ardoon who remotely pirate or pilot the pirate ships. Uh, the Nick Ardoon are still occupying the Patatus, but uh, once uh, Thrawn defeats them, um, once he's able to, he kind of sets them free. This gives Thrawn the goodwill of the Patatus and a clue to where to start looking for the culprits who are behind the Magus's homeworld attack, right? Um, Hapleaf. Uh, who is an Akbui, by the way, um, it arranges for Yomi, who's one of the teenagers, right, to be killed. And she, uh, after she realizes uh, he's using her and their partner to manipulate the Chiss, right? Once she's disposed of, Hapleaf uses a few pieces of jewelry um, made from a rare ore in the system to imply that the Agbui homeworld is rich with it, uh, which sparks the greedy, uh, opportunistic tendencies of Lukuviv has a uh, claim to it uh, via the Chiss, via his family, right? Uh, the ore is used to build ships and would greatly affect the Chiss power dynamic in the chaos. And the one person who defies this is the ran is a rancher that's like n near where they're kind of farming or taking care of this um he suspects that it's uh it's no good he's very skeptical and he sends it away um with a friend to give specifically to thrawn maybe thrawn would know more right. about the material right yeah um so lakuvi uses a, a a chiss kind of protocol to create a family emergency so that the patriarch of the Zodlak family can send all the family members who are in the military to claim the ore for the um, Agbui planet. Um, the patriarch, once they they kind of hear about what's actually going on, um, doesn't agree that it's worth the risk. So Lakuviv um, imprisons them and goes rogue uh, themselves <laughs> and um, uses their access codes to initiate this protocol, which basically calls all members, uh, like I said, serving the military to use their family ships and go in pursuit of the ore. Uh, Lakinda is one member of um, the Zodlak family who is called into service. So we kind of see this part of the story unfold through her her point of view. Um, but she's also skeptical mm -hmm. of the situation. So Thrawn believes that the Chiss are being led into a trap, but continues to go along with it, assessing that the risk to the ascendancy is worth finding out who is behind this elaborate plan. You know, Thrawn can't resist a good a good ball of yarn. Um, so <laughs> when he receives the piece of jewelry, he realizes that um, the mages are the ones that um, that made this and that the ore actually comes from Sunrise, not this fictional, fictional like Agbui planet. The trap becomes even more clear when um, Aralani realizes the same thing. So all of them are like, oh, no. Um, Lakinda. They're starting to put it all together. They're starting to put it all together, and it doesn't look good. And they realize that Lakinda... Uh, Lakinda Thrawn and Arlani realize that the Chiss ascendancy is basically being st steered toward a civil war. Um, other families have been manipulated and are sending fleets of their own. Um, and this is going to start basically a chain reaction because all those families are related to the nine ruling families. And then that will really cause a conflict between yeah, a, them and essentially just a, a huge, huge mess. political issues. Yeah. yeah as they huge as mess. they argue over this fictional mind for sure which is all part of happily's fan right um Absolutely. speaking of happily happily uh ends up um 
being killed by Lacfro, uh, the rancher who was skeptical of him the whole time, right? He kind of figured it out too, or figured out that he was being, you know, malicious, and he ends up killing him. Uh, we and we learn uh, that Jixtus is a Grisk, and he set his sights on Thrawn and uh, tasking his navigator Kilori from the first book, from Chaos Rising, I should say, uh, finding out how the Chiss are able to navigate the chaos. The Skywalkers are still a secret of the Chiss, but Jixtus. Uh, wonders if the Chiss uh, obtained a Navi computer for their travels um, to no space long ago. Uh, the story ends basically with Thurfian uh, named Patriarch of the Myth, and Lakinda is made a... Um, well, she's not made a trial-born Eresi. Uh, she was offered the opportunity to become a trial-born Eresi um, because, obviously... Uh, yeah. Wh- one thing I guess we didn't really say is that the, the <laughs> it all comes together at the end and Thrawn takes the blame for being in the wrong place at the wrong time and he steers everybody away from engaging in their own personal civil war between the three families and then they crash a big ship into the mine so that nobody's going to go down and like check it out and figure everything out and, and get into that political situation. Um, so Thrawn, that's where the title of the book comes from. Greater good is Thrawn is actually kind of taking the blame and, uh, the Lakinda is, they're really mad at her for messing up the opportunity. So she, she's not in favor with the Zodlak family. And therefore there's a couple other families that are like, uh, well, we think, you know, you might be all right. So they're bringing her in here. Um, the last little thing, like the, the cliffhanger of the book is that we learn that there's a secret ancient weapon of the myth family acquired from, um, you know, uh, a galaxy called star Fl- or uh, the, as some ancient alien weapon. Uh, and they call it star flash. Right. And Thurfian is about to learn all the secrets as he's been like, um, upgraded to the patriarch of the myth. Like I said before, it's, it's all crazy. Yeah. No, no opinions here. It's all, I'm just telling you, the book's kind of crazy. There's a lot of detailed names, and we we laid it out. And I and obviously on a first listen, it probably might seem a little bit crazy. Um, but hopefully, when you go back and listen to what we're saying, you can kind of make sense of the book. Um, I'm gonna try to put in the description of this video some of the names and kind of their titles and who they are and stuff. So as we're saying them, like Lakuviv, you're like, who the heck is that? You know, you can maybe refer to that as a glossary or index or something. Yeah, we'll help you um, out. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll do we'll do as good as we can. Um, that basically, though, in a nutshell, is what happened in this book. Greater good. Um, we have another video up on the channel right now, which is just like book discussions. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to do a review of it and kind of discuss it, um, with no spoilers, like at the beginning of the video. And then we'll tell everybody, you know, here's the spoilers, which now you already know what happened in the story. So it shouldn't really affect you. But from that point on, we're just going to discuss it. Um, open discussion, uh, spoilers and all. But uh, if you want, check that video out. Uh, if we made any mistakes or, or anything like that, please put those in the comments. I want this video to be a reference for people. Um, so, you know, uh, listen, watch the video, go to the comments, check it out, uh, see if, you know, we made any mistakes, listen to what people are saying in the comments too. Um, and uh, yeah, that's basically it. Kyle, you got anything else? Where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on uh, Twitter or uh, Kyle D. Larson is my handle. And um, I contribute to Star Wars Newsnet and What the Force. So come on down. Say hi. And yeah, please let yeah. us know if we got anything wrong in the comments. This was a lot. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, we're happy a to lot. And we didn't get to admit yeah, that. We read it once. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and you can, uh, I'm James, and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Meyer Trunks, and also on the Resistance broadcast where we're talking regular Star Wars twice a week. Uh, sometimes it's discussion, but mostly it's news. Um, and uh, yeah, just kind of hashing it out and coming up with speculations, fun stuff like that. Um, but until the next book, um, we'll see you later. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>